Hi, I'm Tim Clark, and I hope you enjoy the video that you're about to watch. If so, please let me know by clicking the subscribe button. Today we're out in the Mojave Desert and we're featuring Roy's Motel and Cafe in Amboy, California. And our guest is Miss Nicole. Thank you so much for joining us today, Nicole. No, no problem. Thank you for reaching out to do this. This is awesome. <laughs> Great. Nicole, the town of Amboy and Roy's Motel and Cafe has such an interesting history. What can you tell us about the early years of both the town and the motel and cafe? So the town started off in about 1858 with the miners coming out here. They were mining everything from the gold, copper, gypsum. Um, we've got salt mines around here. Um, and then it just slowly became more and more popular. We've got the railroad that was going through, which was actually a railroad stop for people for hauling whatever it was they needed. Um, and then slowly it continued to get more popular with the Route 66 opening up, even when it was just a dirt road through here before they actually paved it. There was, uh, we had people coming through. Um, and it got more popular as Route 66 opened. We had a lot more travelers. Um, and then 40s, the 50s is when it really boomed the most. But when it started off in the 20s, they had, um, little cottages they had cons with a gas station we used to have a few gas stations here and it just used to be such a bigger town so much more lively back then and then the interstate happened so tell us about that so when i-40 came through it was about uh, 71 or 72 it cut off a whole 77 mile section from ludlow to fenner so i spoke to somebody whose parents ran the cafe at that time and they said overnight it, it just dropped down to like five percent of the traffic and and that was it that's when hmm. I mean, that's when we started to die yeah okay so how long did the cafe and the, the motel stay open so they held out pretty long since it uh about 71, 72, when the freeway came through they held out until about 1988 with the cottage and the motel finally closing up then and, and that a lot of what we say is what we've heard what we've been told and things like that it's hard to find like definite facts on things out here right yeah so at that point did the population of amboy just go away was it just totally deserted by that it, by that time it had definitely plummeted um I can tell you now we have a population of zero. Okay. <laughs> Nobody lives here in Amboy anymore. Um, we all travel about a mile, about an hour to get here to work. So I it's see. a drive, but totally worth it. Okay, great. Well, let's move forward to 2005. What happened in 2005? So the town of Amboy was actually listed on eBay. Um, we've heard everything from about 1.7 million to 1.9 million, um, and that didn't work out. It, um, but finally, Mr. Akura spoke with Bessie, which was Buster. He was Roy's son-in-law, and he promised that he was going to revitalize the town, bring it back up to what it used to be. So she, uh, she and him made a deal, and he got the whole town for 425000 Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, buy a town for $400,000. Yep. <laughs> hey, let's back up, though, a little bit. Uh, so in the early years of Roy's, maybe it was a gas station and then a, a cafe was added. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so it was built around 1938 um, by Buster and Roy. They were just like the team that really put Amboy together for what it is right now. So it was originally built in about 38 railroad ties, which is amazing. And it was a mechanic shop. It was tire repair. I heard we had anywhere from four to six tow trucks out here. Wow. And yeah, that, that's crazy. 
and uh because it was kind of you were stuck in the middle of nowhere and i mean we were the mechanics um but what did happen is she got tired of cooking for people that were stuck overnight staying overnight because they were waiting for parts or whatever it was so she said she wanted a cafe so the storage area that was here um in the cafe became a cafe okay great so now we're going back forward again 2005 it's sold has anything been renovated remodeled since then? tell me about the gas station so yeah definitely from 2005 um it took a lot to be able to just open to to be a gas station um but since then about 2005 i think we've been open the entire time um it was i mean we were much smaller not too much was going on then we still had movies that were coming out and commercials and videos that were being filmed but up to now there's really been um a jump in progression we are planning on opening up the cottages in just a couple of years so people wow. will be able to stay over after that we're gonna start working on the cafe and get that open again so well, that's great yeah i i really see in the next two three four years it's gonna be so amazing i'd say thank <laughs> to mr akura for even purchasing this town and starting to live out his dream um sadly he did pass away in late january but his son kyle he's been running the town for years so there was no concern that you know amboy would be given up on uh, nothing like that Kyle right. is, he's going through with it and we've been really moving ahead right now and it's exciting it's amazing that's great so tell me about the store now if your travelers come through do they have an opportunity to buy anything to eat anything to drink besides buying gas well we've got about 40 different craft sodas which are amazing butterscotch root beer we've got elderberry soda I'm not even sure what elderberry is but that's my favorite soda right now um we've got snozberry um just tons of different stuff lots of other drinks we've got a bunch of snacks uh right now if they want to eat the best thing we have are uh the things that are in the freezer for the microwave so people won't starve we have something to okay. offer for them and we've got tons of great custom merchandise stuff that you're not going to find the long route 66 because we're not just a regular route 66 shop we have voice motel and cafe so right. we've got all the custom magnets and keychains some really cool etched uh whiskey glasses and massive mugs which is what we make our extra large root beer floats in which you get to make yourself you pick out your oh, soda cool. and everything and it's really cool people love that so what is your operating hours what days and what hours we are open every single day of the year wow. i'm talking christmas new year's eve just every day and we're open about 8 to 8 30. great now you mentioned that the uh the the interest has increased on route 66 and especially at roy's what do you contribute that to well, honestly, most people just come for the sign. They pop in, they take pictures with the sign. We've got the planes that land. There's a landing strip to the west of us. Um, they come, they land, and they really just pull the plane over to the sign, take a picture, and uh, then they're good. That's that's yeah. what they come for. So that's so they, real. So they actually taxi the plane right in front of the sign? Yep. They just... They land over there at the strip. They just taxi it over, pull the plane over, and um, that's it. We've got some of the coolest planes that come through. We've had helicopters coming and landing now. Wow. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay. So tell me about the Roy sign. You said that, you know, that's the photo op. Has it the sign been restored? Yes. So from what I understand, the sign wasn't lit for about 30 years. And back November 16th in 2019, Mr. Akura um, relit the sign. It was a huge deal. Dozens of planes. There were 
you know, the custom cars, motorcycles, people were camped out all over the place. There were a group of people that have old military vehicles, like three quarter ton trucks. And they actually convoyed all the way from Chicago, all the way here, wow. just here for the opening. So, I mean, wow. we had so many people. It was amazing. So it was a really big deal. It was, yeah. It sounds like it's a really big event. So what is the draw, in your opinion, to for Route 66? Why do people travel Route 66? Just your opinion. We've got a lot, a lot of foreigners that come through, a lot of tour buses, motorcycle tour groups, and they just, it's the Americana. It is the epitome of, you know, America, you've got the mother road, Route 66, to just travel along that. We um, had some Italian kids, and they talk about a book that's really pop popular in Italy about a young guy who traveled all of Route 66. And I've heard mm. quite a few of them say how they were inspired by that, just mm. to, to kind of follow in his footsteps. Um, I've seen I've seen guys come through from outside of the States, and they've got tattoos of Royce on them. Oh, I really? mean, that's how passionate they are about it. More than I would have expected. Guys, guys are coming up and they're like, look, look, I've got, I've got all of Roy's tattooed. And I'm like, that's, that's amazing. That's yeah. So your location, tell me about how far you are from Needles and how far you are from Los Angeles, approximately. Oh, um, Needles, we're about an hour and 15 minutes away from. LA, I want to say three hours. I'm not sure. I have a cheat sheet, but I'm really, can I go check my cheat sheet? No, no, you're fine. No, you're good. So not halfway, but it's, it's, it's a good stopping point in between. Yeah. Especially for people that are going from Las Vegas to Palm Springs, um, Joshua Tree. And this is a halfway point for tons of people. It sounds like it. Yeah. Now you mentioned a little bit about your international travelers. Where do your on a typical day or typical week? What countries would you expect you would see uh, nationals from? Germany. That tends to be just the majority of our travelers that come through. Is Germany, whether they're on the motorcycles or bus loads of like 30, 30 tourists at the same time. Um, that's it's germany and then we've got the italians we've got the french we've had a lot of people from poland and holland recently that i noticed but i mean everywhere countries i've never heard of <laughs> they're like where so, are you from so cool <laughs> yeah <laughs> So, you know, Route 66 has different topography and different weather. And your area, being in the middle of the Mojave Desert, when is um, the best season to come through your area? Oh, okay. I'm going to say definitely um, the spring and fall are going to be the best okay. times. Um, this year, we've topped out at about 121 so far. Wow. A couple of years ago, maybe about 126. Hmm. Um, some people have said 130. Hmm. It's just crazy. Yeah. So spring and fall, please. Mm -hmm. I know when I came through, it was probably late September or early October, and the weather was just perfect. Exactly. Yep. Yep. So yep. what about the winter months of December and January? Does it actually get cold there? For us, it gets cold. Um, I would say average in the 40s, it's not going to be unusual. Okay. That's interesting. Okay. So do you have any unusual stories or events that have happened at Roy's that, you know, be worth visiting about? Um, besides the chance of seeing the helicopters, airplanes, the custom motorcycles, the old, old custom vintage cars and things like that. Um, We've Do you have had, anybody coming through on foot or bicycles, anything like oh, that? Yeah, we've had people come through on foot. We've had uh, someone named Bear Son that literally ran through here the last time. He was going from New York to L.A. And, I mean, wow. a big old head, a costume that he would he had made. He wouldn't take his head off for anybody to see him. Um, <laughs> and he was on foot from New York to L.A. He was running. running. This time he was running. 
Wow. Um, okay. We've had people bicycling through, walking through. Um, we had a guy with a rickshaw come through one time. He was oh, actually wow. just, but on a bicycle this time. Wow. Um, but every way that you can think of traveling through, we've seen, I think. Okay. Hey, I'm just going to throw this at you. I didn't prepare you for this at all. Across the road, there's some kind of a statue with some kind of a lion or some kind of an animal. Do you know anything about that? Yes, yeah, so that's about three miles um, east of us. We're not sure. They're called guardian, lion, guardian lions, the ambu food dogs. We've heard so many different things about what they are. Nobody knows. Hmm. We've heard that it's to pre protect the, the land, which is for sale right now. Um, we've heard it was going to be an entrance to a touristy thing. Some people said the casino. I mean, it's just people are grabbing at ideas. Nobody knows the facts of why they're hmm. there. Okay. That's interesting. Maybe someday we'll know. Well, Ms. Nicole, I really appreciate you taking time out of your day today to visit with us. Fun to visit with you. And I just appreciate you joining us. Oh, thank you so much for reaching out to be able to do this. This is cool. We like to get out there as much as we can, reach as many people as possible. And I think this is a great opportunity. Great. So when you're traveling across the Mojave Desert on Old Route 66, be sure to stop in at Roy's Motel and Cafe. Thank you. See you guys when you come through. Thank you for watching this video. You know, I just love Route 66 and the era of Americana that Route 66 represents. Producing these videos is my way of giving back to Route 66 and to promote Route 66 to people, not just in the United States, but to people all around the world. Now, if you enjoy watching these videos, please let me know by clicking the subscribe button and if you want to be notified when new videos are posted, then just simply ring the bell.